video, we'll be looking at adaptations. So the word adaptations refer to specific features that are shown in different organisms uh, that would help its survival or sometimes even help with its ability to compete with other organisms for resources. A lot of times in exam questions, they may give you uh, some information in a paragraph or perhaps with some pictures as well. And then you will be asked to uh, determine what type of adaptations would be shown in this picture or shown by the organism. And then perhaps you might need to explain or suggest why those adaptations is helpful with, uh, for their survival or competition. So let's focus on the three types of adaptations that you need to be aware of. So the easiest ones to think about would be behavioral adaptations. So things like um, penguins, they huddle together uh, when it's really, really cold because they can share their body heat and keep themselves warm as a whole group. Um, uh, another example would be certain reptiles where they, when it's really, really hot, they might um, perhaps spread themselves out on the ground when it's nice and cool um, or perhaps hide in the shade. Those are adaptations. Same as how you put on a coat or jacket when you're feeling cold. That is a behavioral adaptation. As for the other two, it's quite easy to mix them up. So it's really important that you understand the difference between those two. So one of them is anatomical, which refers to the physical features of uh, the organism, whereas another type is called physiological. So physiological adaptations refer specifically to chemical processes that occur inside the body. So this could be things like respiration or uh, photosynthesis or digestion, how certain all, uh, animals actually digest their food in different ways. So you may even think about, let's say, cows. They are able to make the enzyme cellulase to help them digest cellulose in cell walls, in plant cells. So that's why they are able to digest the fiber in uh, vegetables, whereas humans don't have the ability to make cellulase, so we don't have that physiological adaptation. Whereas anatomical, um, as, I, as I explained in the example earlier, um, in the cows, they have four stomachs. That's a physical feature. So anatomical refers to physical features that are shown by uh, organisms. It could be external and it could be internal. So the number of stomachs they've got, that is an internal um, feature, but physical feature on the outside would be things like if they have sharp claws or not, or do they have fur or hair on the surface? Uh, what color of fur they've got or what color skin they have, the size of their ears, the length of their arms or limbs, etc. Those are all physical uh, anatomical adaptations. So one specific thing to notice about anatomical adaptations is that they can provide evidence for evolution. So earlier, when we were looking at chapter 10.3 about the evidence for evolution, we came across something called homologous structures when looking at uh, comparative anatomy. So homologous structures are referring to uh, structures that look very, very different on the outside, but have the same or very similar underlying bone structure. So for example, the arms of a human versus the wings of a bat and the flippers of a dolphin, they look very different, but they all are made up of the same bone uh, arrangement, especially with the five digits. Uh, so we have five fingers, but if you look at the wings and the flippers, they also have five digits that, are f that form up the whole structure there. So that is an evidence for what we call divergent evolution. So divergent evolution refers to uh, when different organisms evolve from the same common ancestor. So they have the same genetic origin. On the other hand, we can also have something called analogous structures. So analogous structures are pretty much the opposite to homologous structures. So analogous structures are structures that have uh, the same function and they appear similar, but have very, very different underlying structures. Uh, a classic example would be thinking about uh, a dolphin and a shark. If you look at a dolphin and a shark, they look quite similar. They have um, the same flippers, for example. And the reason for that is because they both live in the ocean, so they must have very similar adaptations to allow them to survive in their environment. However, they've got different origins. So a um, dolphin is a mammal, whereas a shark is a cold-blooded fish. So the idea is that they actually have a different origin to start with. So if you look at the bone structure, they also look very, very different. So analogous structures appear very similar or and serve the same function, but have very different uh, features or, and different underlying structures and origins. So we call that convergent evolution, where two organisms 
that have very different uh, evolutionary um, origin or background, but they have evolved to have the same or similar adaptations to suit them in that particular environment. So there you have it. These are the three different types of adaptations. Behavioral adaptations would refer to um, how they actually act out in certain scenarios, like the penguins hud uh, huddling together. Physiological adaptations refer to internal chemical processes, things like uh, metabolic reactions like digestion, respiration, etc. Whereas anatomical adaptations refer to physical features that could be external and internal, for example, their bone structure or their fur, the color of the skin, texture, etc. But within that, one thing to keep in mind is that we can actually notice homologous structures between different organisms that provide us evidence for divergent evolution, but also we can look at analogous structures that provide evidence for convergent evolution. So these are the three types of adaptations.